Hello and welcome back. Today we are going to be talking about 10 very strong gunner builds in Deep Rock Galactic. For this list, we're going to be using each and every single primary and secondary weapon, and I think in most combinations, if not all combinations in some way. However, we will not be using the same overclock more than once. So even though plenty of these overclocks match very well with one another, again, just like the scout video, I didn't want to just say magic bullets as a secondary works really well with basically all of your primary weapons because that would be kind of boring. So once again, we are going to be using carl.gg. This is a build website that you can go to and you can make your own builds. You can check out all of other people's builds and you can also check out all of the stats. That way you kind of get an idea of what your build will look like or what these builds could potentially look like. Our very first build is using the Hurricane Guided Rocket System. And we are going to be taking Rocket Barrage, a brand new overclock for the Hurricane. This replaced Manual Guidance Cutoff with a very, very fun overclock. This lets you have rapid fire missiles as well as you get a ton more missiles, but you no longer have guided missiles and you also do less damage with these missiles. The way I have it built is like this. So we're going with damage in tier one. This really helps just offset the amount of damage. You don't really need ammo for this one. AOE is fine too. Both of those are good. If you want more crowd control, AOE might be a good option. Tier two, it's your choice. Pick whichever one of these you like. Armor breaking is technically bugged on the hurricane, just like it is with all the explosive weapons where it only counts for the direct impact of the rocket. Then we're going with larger mag size in tier three. Full rate of fire is very fun with this, but having 72 rounds, I think is a little bit better overall. Then I go with more AOE damage in tier four. Weak spot damage can kind of work with this, but I find AOE damage is a little bit more consistent. And then in tier five, I go with the stun. And then for a secondary weapon, we're going to be taking compact mags with the burst pistol. This is a very simple bounce overclock that just gets you a whole lot more ammo. Although you do have a slower rate of fire and a slower reload speed. That's okay. We can make up for one of those two in your tier two options. The way I have it built is like this. So in tier one, I'm going with extra accuracy. All of them in tier one are good though. If you want more damage or you want to blow through rounds, take either of them. They're all really good choices. Tier two, I'm taking faster reload speed. I'd recommend either this one or the faster rate of fire just to make up for that. Then in tier three, pick whichever one you'd like. I go with damage, but mag size is fine too. Tier four, again, your choice. They're all actually really good. Armor breaking can be good with this. Uh, more ammo can be good. I'm taking the weak spot damage so we can hit enemies in the weak spot a little bit easier. And then in tier five, I'm going with the stun. This way we can just have a stun on our weapon. Although if you want more DPS, you can take the six round burst too. Compact mags and the burst pistol in general is very flexible. You can kind of build it however you'd like. This is the way I like running this one though. For our second build, we have a gunner classic. This is fire gunner. And we're going to be taking Burning Hell with the minigun as our primary weapon. Burning Hell is an amazing overclock. This makes it so you basically have a short range flamethrower on the front of your minigun. Downside is your minigun heats up faster, which may or may not be a downside because you can take advantage of that with your tier fives. The way I like building it is like this. So in tier one, I'm taking better accuracy, although any of them in tier one are fine. Maybe you don't want to go with the cooldown. Cooldown is actually not super useful, but increased rate of fire or uh, increased accuracy is really nice. Tier 2, I like going with more ammo. This is just so that I can use the flamethrower a little bit more often. Damage is fine though too if you want to have more single target damage for big enemies. Pick whichever one of those you would like. And then in tier 3, all of these are good. I like taking the blow through round so we can potentially do a little bit better against crowds. But if you don't like big enemies, you can take armor breaking. Or if you just want to stun things, you can take that too. Tier 4, all of these choices are pretty good. It's your choice as to which one you'd like. I really like the faster spin up just so that there's less downtime with the minigun but either the other two options are good too if you want more damage or if you want longer consistent shooting. In tier five, I would not recommend Cold as the Grave, the middle option here. I am taking aggressive venting. I like this one a little bit more and it's purely because of the spectacle of it. Firebolts is generally better. So you could take that one and then you'd have more fire damage at range. It's just I, I really like aggressive venting for having more AOE and a little bit more crowd control. And then to make it truly devastating, we are going to be taking volatile bullets on the Bulldog Heavy Revolver, which nerfs our damage slightly by 10 points of damage, but it makes it so we do 300% more damage when anything is on fire, which will be very easy since we can light them on fire with our minigun. I also like taking these with the incinerary grenades, so that helps as well. And then the way I like building the revolver is like this, taking faster reload speed in tier one. You can take accuracy though. They're both really good. Pick whichever one you'd like. Tier two, I usually go with either ammo or damage. You don't really need the recoil reduction a lot of the time. So either you can have more bullets to kill things when they're more on fire, or you could just take one of the damages to make it so your damage goes back up to normal. Tier three, I like taking hollow points. We get more damage when we hit weak spots. Very cool. We're probably going to be aiming for weak spots so that we can trigger volatile bullets. Tier four, more ammo, but it's your choice. Both are good. And then in tier five, more accuracy. You don't usually need neurotoxin with this one, but it's not a bad option, especially if you just end up using the revolver without lighting things on fire. 
then it's perfectly fine too. But accuracy I find a little bit more useful with this overclock. This one you're just going to be using when enemies are on fire or to pick things off at a distance. Things that the revolver already does really, really well. This just kills big things even faster. You can kill basically any enemy in the game that can be lit on fire very quickly. The only problem is something like Dreadnoughts can't be lit on fire, so it doesn't really help against that. For our third gunner build, we're going to be taking the auto cannon and we're going to be taking Big Bertha with it. This is the heavy hitting auto cannon build, so this one just deals really high single target damage, as well as it still does pretty well against crowds, and it's more accurate than the regular auto cannon. Downside is that you have less ammo in the magazine, less ammo overall, and you also have a slower top rate of fire. The way I like building Big Bertha is like this, so in tier 1 I'm going with extra ammo, I would say this one or the magazine size is better than the damage. Damage doesn't help as much as the other two in most situations unless you just want to go full damage Big Bertha. And if you're taking this on a Dreadnought mission, maybe you're probably not going to be running out of ammo too quick. Then it's decent, but the other two options I think are better for general purpose use. Tier 2, I like the higher rate of fire, or at least the higher top rate of fire, so we go back up to the normal rate of fire, or a little bit above that. Tier 3, I like going with more direct damage, so we can hit things even harder. Then in Tier 4, I really like going with the armor breaking with this one, just so you can hit big things even harder. Rip off the armor from Praetorians, rip off the armor from the Twins, whatever it might be. And then in Tier 5, more damage when we're at full rate of fire, because why not stack even more damage on top of this? You could go with the shield, though, too, at top rate of fire. That one also works pretty well if you want to be a bit tankier. This one actually works pretty well at medium range because you have decent accuracy. Now, since we have a primary that does so well against single targets, we're going to take a secondary that does well, well kind of also against single targets, but mostly against crowds. We're going to be taking Hellfire with the coil gun. This makes it so once you fire your shot, you have a bigger AOE from the actual trail of the coil gun, and it can light all enemies on fire, and the fire lingers for quite a while. Not as much as it used to. It used to linger for like five seconds. Now it lingers for like three, and I think the heat might have also gotten nerfed on it a little bit. It used to be really strong. It's still very strong for crowds, but before it was strong against basically everything. So in tier one, I'm taking extra ammo. You could take this or any of the other options. They're all pretty good for the coil gun. Faster reload in tier two. I like this one the best for Hellfire. Usually I'm not too worried about damage. I just want to be using this against crowds to kind of keep things away. Tier 3, I like taking the stun, but the fear is also pretty good, especially with the fire. So whichever one of those you would like, they're both really good. Tier 4, I go with the damage reduction. This is just so that when you're charging it, you don't take as much damage. That's kind of nice, especially since you can charge this as you're falling off of something and take less fall damage. And then in Tier 5, the bigger AoE. Although all of them in Tier 5 for this overclock are pretty fun. Use the coil gun for crowds to kind of soften them up, clear them up that way and then use the auto cannon for taking out any sort of big enemies. For our fourth build, we're going to be taking the new Plasma Burster Missiles, which is a pretty cool overclock now that it's gotten buffed. The only thing that changed about Plasma Burster Missiles, other than they can no longer one-shot flying rocks, which is kind of a nerf to them. I mean, it, it would be a huge nerf if they didn't buff the uh, tracking of the rockets. So now the rockets don't tend to blow themselves up, which is a huge advantage to Plasma Bursters, and you can clear up things very, very fast. It does a ton of single target damage and does really well against crowds too. The way I like to build it is like this, so I'm going with extra ammo in tier one. I like this because you do lose out on ammo and you don't really need the damage or the AOE with this one. I think ammo is your best option in tier one. Tier two, either one of these is good. I like the armor breaking with it, but you could also take the increased velocity if you think the missiles are moving a little bit too slow. That's perfectly fine too. Tier 3, the faster rate of fire does help with this, just so you can get them out a little bit quicker. Tier 4, I would recommend the uh, weak spot damage. I think that's a little bit more useful than the AoE damage. The missiles don't have great AoE on them once you have this overclock, so having more weak spot damage helps a little bit more. And then in Tier 5, I recommend either the stun or the nitroglycerin. Stun I find really useful. Fire is okay with these as well, but it's going to be more for crowds then and less for big enemies. Stun works really well against everything, and Nitroglycerin is more towards really large enemies like Praetorians or Oppressors or Dreadnoughts. You can also only have so many missiles up at one time, which is 19 missiles at most. And to make up for our lack of very long range, we're going to be taking Elephant Rounds for the Bulldog Heavy Revolver. This one is a very strong overclock that makes it so you do massive damage per shot, although we have less ammo, less ammo in the gun a lot more recoil to per shot and slower spread recovery. But hey, it does hit like a truck, which is pretty awesome. And mostly I'm going to be using this for taking out long range enemies like spitballers, menaces, potentially cave leeches, acid spitters, or uh, Mactera, especially tri jaws. This one is really strong for that. This is the way that I like to build it. So increase reload speed in tier one. That way we can just reload quicker, but you can take accuracy. That one's good too. 
more ammo in tier two. We're going to need more ammo. I think that's the better option. Although recoil reduction honestly isn't too bad with this. You don't really need to go with damage with elephant rounds. Although in tier three, we're taking more damage with the weak spot damage with hollow point rounds just so that we can hit big enemies even harder. Then uh, increased ammo in tier four. Again, we're going to need that ammo. And then increased accuracy in tier five. You don't usually need neurotoxin, although you could have it just for hitting big things even harder like oppressors and praetorians so with this one i just use it as a sniper rifle to pick off things at a distance then switch to the hurricane to deal with everything else for our fifth build we're going back to the minigun but we're still keeping with a lot of damage similar to the elephant rounds from last time we're going to be going with lead storm lead storm is a pretty cool overclock it gives you massively more damage with the minigun however you can't really move when shooting the minigun at least normally. You can still bunny hop and you can still use other means of mobility like your uh, zip lines or if you're standing on Dottie or standing on Molly or standing on Betsy, I guess, then you can move, but some of those are unreliable. The way I like to build this is for full damage. It's really good at single target damage and that's what I like to build it for so that it kind of embraces that. Tier 1, pick whichever one of these you'd like. They're all really good. I like the accuracy. Tier 2, I like going with more damage so we can hit things even harder. Tier 3, I'm going with the armor breaking. Although, blow through rounds is also pretty good with this one. Blow through rounds gives you more crowd control. Armor breaking gives you more single target damage. Pick whichever one of those you would like. Then in tier 4, I like going with the more damage once we have the maximum rate of fire. Uh, I guess maximum accuracy with this. But all of them in tier 4 are pretty good. Pick whichever you'd like. And then in tier 5, cold is the grave so that we can keep firing this. Uh, every time we kill something, it'll cool down our gun a little bit at a time. This is really, really good for single targets and okay against crowds, which is alright because we're going to be taking a secondary that it's very good against crowds. For this, we're going to be taking magic bullets on the revolver. This is the build that I chose to put magic bullets on. Magic bullets is a really cool overclock that makes it so whenever you hit near an enemy, your bullet tries to bounce into nearby enemies, which is really good with this particular build. I like to run the reload speed. We don't need accuracy. It doesn't matter. We just need to hit close enough. Reload speed is better than accuracy with this one. Tier 2, we're going to go with uh, more ammo. We don't need damage. We don't need recoil reduction. Recoil doesn't matter because, again, we just need to hit close enough, so we don't need to be super accurate. Damage also doesn't matter because this is already nerfing our damage, and this is going to be more for crowds, so ammo is the best option here. Tier 3, blow through rounds can work with this one, but explosive rounds is just so strong because of the neurotoxin that you can take in Tier 5. So both these in combination are what is really, really strong about this overclock. Once you hit near an enemy, you will splash damage to everything near it, and you can potentially uh, also splash neurotoxin to it because the explosive round will hit and it can spread neurotoxin. Then your round will bounce into another nearby enemy and splash again. So you can potentially splash twice for every single bullet spreading poison across multiple enemies, slowing them down and dealing a lot of damage over time. And then in tier 4, we're just going with more ammo. Again, damage doesn't matter. We just want a lot of bullets. This gets you a ton of shots. You have 60 in total. You can clear up crowds very easy with this. It clears up a lot of enemies, at least a lot of small enemies. It doesn't work incredibly well against really big enemies, though, which is fine because that's what our minigun is used for. Then for our sixth build, we're going to be moving to more of a general purpose build with the Thunderhead Heavy Auto Cannon as our primary weapon. We're going to be taking combat mobility with this. Combat mobility makes it so we have a smaller magazine size, however we can move much faster with the Auto Cannon. And we also have a faster top rate of fire and we also get extra accuracy. All of that is really good. Combat mobility is super fun and I think kind of an underrated overclock. So the way I build it is going with extra ammo in tier 1. However, you can take mag size in tier 1 too and go back up to 110. That's also a pretty good option, it's just it's really hard to pass up the ammo for the auto cannon because the auto cannon doesn't usually run out of ammo. And if you stack even more ammo with it, it takes you forever to run out of shots with this. Can be really good for a team setting too because other people can get your resupplies. Tier 2, I like going with the faster top rate of fire because with this particular overclock, you can hit your max rate of fire with just two rounds which makes it so you can trigger either of your tier 5s almost immediately at any given point. Tier 3, I like going with more direct damage, although more AoE damage is also really good. Tier 4, I like going with the armor breaking, but AoE is not a bad option either. And then in tier 5, I would recommend either the shield or the damage once you hit your top rate of fire, because you can hit it almost instantly. Even for just non-combat areas, it's still very useful to have the shield, just because if you fall off of something, you fire two bullets, you have 50% damage reduction, you hit the ground, and you don't take as much damage. That's pretty cool, at least if you remember to do that. You can also do the same thing with the coil gun with its charge, which is pretty awesome. Now to pair with this, we're going to be taking six shooter on the revolver. This is a basically just a straight upgrade to the revolver. It's a balanced overclock that makes it so you can have a faster rate of fire and you hold more shots and you get slightly less reload speed and slightly worse spread, but that's okay. The revolver is already pretty accurate 
and this lets you spam fire it at close range very effectively against big targets. The way I like to build it is like this, going with extra reload speed. This just makes up for the lack of reload speed that we have, and it's a little bit faster than just the base revolver can reload anyway. Tier 2, we're going with extra ammo. Tier 3, we're going with more weak spot damage. Tier 4, we're going with more damage, although extra ammo is also really good here. And then in Tier 5, we're going with increased accuracy. We're just going to be using the revolver at close to medium range and spamming this into enemies. We're also going to be using the auto cannon at close to medium range for just clearing up crowds. And speaking of very straightforward builds, our next build coming in at number 7 is the overtuned feed mechanism for the hurricane. This is a clean overclock that gets you more velocity and faster rate of fire. It's a very good overclock for the Hurricane. It just makes it even more consistent, which is really cool. The way I like to build it is just kind of my basic setup. Although this time I'm not taking rate of fire because our overclock already has that covered. So in tier one, I'm taking extra ammo, but all of them in tier one are really good. Pick whichever one you'd like. Tier two, your choice. I like armor breaking for this one, but increased speed is good. Tier three, I would highly recommend the mag size because then you go up to 72 rounds in the gun and you don't need the increased rate of fire from tier three. Tier four, your choice again, pick whichever one of these you'd like. I'm going with the increased weak spot damage. And then in tier five, I would highly recommend stun. Although if you want to go with fire and do a fire gunner build, this one's a pretty good option too. And we're going to also do the same thing with our secondary weapon where we're going to be taking composite casings with the burst pistol. This one you can also build however you'd like because it kind of just makes the burst pistol better. We get increased ammo and we get increased rate of fire. Both of those are very nice for the burst pistol and it makes it so you can build it however you'd like. The way I'm building it is like this. Increased accuracy in tier 1 so that we can hit things further away. Increased reload speed in tier 2 but all of them are really good in tier 2 so pick whichever one you would like. Increased damage in tier 3. Both these options are really good though too. Increased ammo in tier 4, this way we can just spam out the gun more often, but if you want armor breaking or weak spot damage, both of those are really good options too. And then stun in tier 5 so that we get extra utility, so we can stun with this and stun with our primary, although you could just take the longer burst if you want that as well, and potentially get more DPS. This is a super straightforward build that can do any sort of job very well, and doesn't really need to change for any sort of mission type. It'll do well on everything. And speaking of spraying down the enemy, we're also going to be doing that with our next build. For this, we have a little more oomph minigun. This is a very straightforward overclock too. This is another clean overclock that just gets you one more point of damage per shot. And it also gets you a 0.2 second faster spin up. That second part is actually really nice. It just makes the minigun more consistent. And the way I like to build this is to go with the 0.1 second spin up so you can get immediately into the fight with the minigun, which is really cool. The way I like building this is the way I usually build the minigun, so increased accuracy in tier 1. Tier 2, more ammo. Damage is nice here though too, pick whichever one you'd like. Tier 3, your choice. Again, really good options here. I like blow through rounds for more crowd control, but if you want armor breaking, that's a good choice too. Faster spin up in tier 4, I would highly recommend you try this one out. And just to see how you like it, because it makes it so the minigun just starts up immediately can start firing. And that is really cool, that makes the minigun even more consistent than it already is. Then in tier 5, any of these are good, but I like Cold as the Grave just so that we can continue firing the minigun more often. This one's very straightforward, it's just a stronger, faster minigun than what the base minigun is. So really good at single target damage, really good at crowds, and okay against really small targets like the Jellyfish and the Swarmers. And then since our primary weapon does so well against kind of everything, I wanted to really specialize with a secondary that did a lot of single target damage, so for this we're taking lead spray with the burst pistol. This lets you have a lot of damage with the burst pistol, but you are 300% less accurate with the burst pistol. So close range is your only range with this overclock. And the way I like building it is all for damage. This is probably my favorite way to build this particular overclock. It's not necessarily the strongest way, and this shreds big things really really fast as long as you get right up next to them and just shove the gun into their weak spot. It will shred through basically anything. Maybe don't do that with like detonators though. You might not want to be that close to them. So for this I'm going with extra damage in tier 1, faster bursts in tier 2 just so that we can have it. <laughs> it's just more DPS that way, or at least faster DPS that way. Reload speed and recoil reduction is also really good here though. Uh, pick whichever one of those you would like. Then more damage in tier 3 so we can stack even more damage. More weak spot damage in tier 4 so that once we are directly onto something's weak spot we can do even more damage to it. And then the longer burst to have a 6 round burst because why not, we need all the DPS with this one. This build is super fun, it runs through ammo very fast though, so just use this for big targets, like get right up next to oppressors, get right next to Praetorians, menaces, dreadnoughts, whatever it might be. You will shred them very quickly, but you will run out of ammo quickly. That shouldn't be such a huge deal because the minigun is fairly ammo efficient, and the way we built it 
you do get a decent amount of bullets with it. For our ninth build, we have another auto cannon build. This is going with the Neurotoxin Payload, which did recently get changed, which now we no longer have less damage to big enemies. We actually have more damage, but we have less AoE than we used to, and we also have less ammo than we used to. Neurotoxin Payload is still very strong, and it's still really good at crowd control. It's a little bit better at single target damage now, but it has less sustain than it used to, where it used to have a ton of sustain and you would just get so much value out of this overclock. You still can, just not as much as you used to. So the way I like building it is like this, going with more ammo in tier one, just so that we can kind of make up for that lack of ammo. In tier two, I like going with the faster startup rate of fire, but any of them in tier two are pretty good. Pick whichever one you'd like. In tier three, I like going with more of the direct damage. That one helps out a little bit more just because we don't have a nerf to the direct damage. More AOE radius in tier four though, I like that one better than the armor breaking for this overclock. Just makes it so you can splash poison a little bit easier to more enemies. And then the fear in tier 5 is still extremely strong. The fear plus the poison is crazy strong on the higher difficulties because you hit, you splash poison to everything, and there's a good chance you fear everything too. So everything runs away from you, it's taking damage over time, and it's slowing down just from the poison. It's also being marked so your teammates can clean it up easier. And since our primary deals so well with crowds, we're going to be taking a secondary that is really good for single targets. We're going to be taking Mole for the Coil Gun. This makes it so you can punch through even more terrain than normal with the coil gun. So you can shoot through even more walls, even more stuff. And every wall or anything that you go through, wall, crystal, rock, whatever it might be, you will get extra damage on hit with the mole. So you can stack up damage with mole really fast. It can actually hit anything incredibly hard. And then the only downside to this one is that we have a slower charge speed. That's okay a lot of the time. It's really easy to ping stuff, get behind some sort of cover, some sort of wall and just punch through and get some extra damage per shot. You don't need to make an elaborate setup to punch through like 20 walls to one shot presser or something. You can do that and it's very fun to do that, but it's usually not needed. Just punching through one or two walls to hit enemies a little bit harder is all the value that you really need to get out of mold to make it a really strong overclock. The way I like building it is like this, going with extra ammo in tier one just so that we can use it more often. Charge speed is really good with this one though too. I like that one. Or you could stack full damage. Full damage mole is pretty fun as well. Increased reload speed in tier 2, again you could go with more damage here, that is a decent option. Stun in tier 3, although you could take fear in tier 3 as well, they're both really good. Damage reduction in tier 4, I just like this, so if I fall off of something I can charge my coil gun and take a little bit less damage. I've just gotten really used to that, so I basically never take this one off. And then electricity in tier 5 so that we can slow down enemies and do a little bit more damage. And then for our 10th and final build, we are going back to the hurricane guided rocket system and this time we're taking fragmentation missiles. This is a clean overclock that gets us more AoE damage and more AoE radius. And we're going to be building it just to excel at AoE damage and just for dealing with crowds. This one's actually really strong for just dealing with crowds of regular grunts. Tier 1, I'm taking the larger AoE so that we can make better use of this, but all of them are good in Tier 1. And this is a clean overclock, so you can kind of build it however you'd like. In Tier 2, I'm going with the increased velocity, although armor breaking is not a bad choice either. Again, armor breaking only works on direct impact from the missiles, not from the actual explosion radius of the missiles. Tier 3, I like taking the faster rate of fire just so that the gun is a little bit more consistent. More AoE damage in Tier 4, we're building it for AoE damage, it kind of makes sense to stack that. And then stuns in tier 5, although fire can also be pretty fun in tier 5 too for this one. Stuns is just a little bit more consistent because it can splash and stun multiple enemies. And the AoE radius is a little bit bigger, so it makes it uh, potentially more consistent against crowds. And then for a secondary weapon, we're going to be focused on single target damage again. This time we're going to be taking triple tech chamber for the coil gun. This allows you to fire out three shots in quick succession once you fire out the first shot. The second and third shot do less damage, as well as they can't pen surfaces like the first shot can, so you do have to keep that in mind. Tier 1, I take the faster charge, although more ammo is really good too, and I'll switch between the two of them. They're really good options. Tier 2, I like the faster reload speed, but any of them tier 2 are pretty good. Stun in tier 3, just so that I can stun potentially multiple enemies with this. Fear is also really good, you can fear multiple enemies with this too. Tier 4, I like taking the damage reduction, this used to be bugged, it's no longer bugged, which is probably a good thing because it was kind of crazy before with this one where you could have 50% damage reduction the entire match. Uh, that was a bit too strong, and you could take the shockwave with this one, the shockwave is actually pretty good. And then in tier 5 going into electricity, because each shot does have the electricity trail on it, so it can slow down enemies and deal damage over time thanks to that. Usually I like using this for long range, for picking off things at a distance, and then I'll use the fragmentation missiles for close and medium range things, especially against crowds where it can really excel at that. Both these actually excel pretty well against crowds and pretty well against single targets, so it's a good mix of kind of everything with this build. And that'll do 10 very strong gunner builds. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this, tell me what your favorite gunner builds are down in the comments below. You guys take care, have a great rest of your day, and I will talk to you next time. Bye bye!